Chapter 4, Brendan Espinoza. The impressive breadth and diversity of wildlife in the modern middle school is on display nowhere more than in the lunchroom. Here, we see the species Chiriliterus maximus grazing in her native habitat, the salad bar. I focus on Brittany Vanderveld and Letitia Butts as they make their delicate selection of lettuce, cucumber, and tomato slices. As I shoot, I balance the flip cam on my forearm to keep it steady. Everything looks better on YouTube when the camera work isn't all jumpy. A longing glance in the direction of the pizza table, I continue my narration. But alas, it is not to be. For cheerleaderess, this meal is garnished with a radish rose and fat-free dressing. And wait, I pull back the shot to include Jordan McDaniel heading out of the food line with a heavily laden tray. Could it be? Yes, a rare clumsiest fall down us, weaving his way to the nearest table. You can do it, clumsiest. Uh-oh, there goes the soup and that orange rolling across the floor. Oh man, this stuff writes itself. Who needs a script when you've got real life? And now we leave the relative safety of the food line and venture into the lion's den. I go on, panning over to the corner table where Aaron Hakimian, Bear Bratsky, and some of their football buddies are eating too much and laughing too loud. This is the land of the carnivores where lesser animals fear to tread. Don't I know it. I'm filming on, filming on maximum zoom even though it's bound to be a little blurry. I sure don't intend to go any closer and get fed my own video camera. But where's their leader? The apex predator. Could that be him paying for a pack of Fig Newtons at the cash register? Yes, it is. The king of beasts. Footballist heroist. His thunderous footsteps striking terror in the hearts of all creatures, great and small. Watch him make his majestic way too. As I pan my flip cam to follow Chase Ambrose's path to his football buddies, he disappears from the frame. I frown. He's not going over there. He's headed to somewhere else. I get him back into the shot, struggle to continue my voiceover. But wait, mighty footballist has changed direction. He's taking his mighty self to a different table. For reasons known only to his supreme mightiness, he's coming. Oh my God, he's coming here. I whip the camera away fast enough to leave a trail of burnt air hanging in the cafeteria. He's right opposite me, larger than life, holding his tray over my table. Why is Chase Ambrose coming anywhere near lowly me? Does he know I'm making fun of him and his friends in a YouTube video? If so, I'm dead. No ifs, ands, or buts. My last interaction with him was the time he and his co-Neanderthal stood me against a tetherball pole and then played an intense game, the rope whipping around me until I was trussed up like a turkey. I'd probably still be there if the sanitation workers hadn't come to empty the dumpster that day. Actually, I'm lucky I wasn't in the dumpster. Those jerks bullied Joel Weber so badly that his folks finally sent him to boarding school. Is anyone sitting here? Chase asks. I glance up, expecting to get a full face of something. He's standing there, looking like he's never laid eyes on me before. My mind screams, red alert, red alert, but aloud I say, help yourself. He takes a seat and then actually spreads his napkin across his lap just like a civilized person. Although I look down at my own lap, no napkin, and probably none on any lap in the entire cafeteria. This is the weirdest thing that's ever happened. Unless, could the rumors be true? It was the biggest news in town that the great Chase Ambrose fell off his roof and landed on his head this summer. You can still see the cuts and scrapes on his face and his arms in a sling, but the gossip around school is that the guy actually has amnesia. He doesn't remember anything from before the accident. I thought it was just a rumor, but what other explanation could there be for why he's sitting here with me instead of with his football friends and acting like a human being, no less? My video on hold, I turn back to eating, and let me tell you, that's not easy when you're sitting across from the apex predator, amnesia or not. I read that some amnesia is temporary. If it all comes back to him, I could have my entire egg salad sandwich shoved up my nose just for daring to be near him. Then I notice that he's struggling to saw away at a barbecued chicken breast. The dull plastic utensils don't make it easy, especially with one arm immobilized against his chest. He's really working hard at it. Beads of sweat stand out on his brow. I speak the craziest, most foolhardy words that have ever come out of my mouth. 
You need help with that? No, thanks. He keeps on sawing, getting nowhere, his frustration growing. I still can't explain why I do it. I get up, loop around the long table, and approach Chase from behind. It's easier when both arms work. He battles a moment longer and then gives in with a sigh. Maybe I could use a hand. So there I am in the middle of the cafeteria, hunched over the apex predator, cutting up his chicken. At one point, Shoshana Weber passes by and shoots me a look that perfectly combines shock, amazement, and disapproval. Or maybe she's just trying to figure out why I'm sawing at his meat instead of his carotid artery. I finish, put down the knife, and hand him back the fork. Thanks, he says sheepishly. No big deal. I return to my side of the table, sit down, and hit the floor hard. A chorus of raucous laughter explodes all around me. That's when I notice I'm surrounded by football players. Bear puts my chair down on top of me, trapping me under it. Chase, man, you're at the wrong table, Aaron exclaims. Come with us. We saved you a spot. They practically kidnap him and drag him to the lion's den. A few seconds later, the chair is lifted off me and somebody hauls me to my feet. Chase, sorry, he says, looking uncomfortable. Come on, man, over here, comes a volley of shouts. He hesitates. They're your teammates and your best friends, I tell him. Because maybe he doesn't remember. Right. If I didn't know better, I'd think he wasn't that thrilled with the idea. Back in my seat, I take out my camera and realize that the video has been running the whole time. There's no picture, obviously, but the audio is all there. I might listen to it later just to prove to myself that I've had a close encounter with Chase Ambrose and lived to tell the tale.